Well, here we go. Neo 2 patch 1.08 actually nerfed some things and the main target of the patch is yokai abilities. So, I'm just going to cover some of the standout ones and the rest of the notes will be in the description. I did wonder when they were going to start tuning down some stuff and yep, took them about a month. So, to kick the elephant in the room, Inenra and likely every other core is not going to receive barehanded damage anymore to scale them. So hopefully you abuse that barehanded build enough, as it's likely dead now, when it comes to using an Enra anyways. This was expected, hence I stood away from the build, so honestly I'm not surprised given how much it dumpstered every boss in like, 1 to 2 seconds. Another obvious one is a Takumaru, getting some down to mint against certain bosses, but overall, it's still the strongest yokai skill, and can still hurt bosses really good, so my Apocalypse build holds up. The footage you're seeing is me using the build post 1.08. Ninjutsu's concealment mystic art affecting its damage is likely gone, but my apocalypse video was all done without it, so honestly, it's still an OP build and still an OP skill. All the footage you're seeing is with the exact same build, but on patch 1.08, and it hardly <laughs> feels different. I don't know if anything at all was changed, but the kicker is now Snake Chan is probably dead. She now costs 8 anima to use, and in an ideal situation she would hit the enemy 4 times. That's now been reduced to 3. Still good to have her poison build stacking melee damage, still good at key destroying, but otherwise much worse than before. Nurikabe or Mizuki are likely better replacements now if we can land certain yokai ability damage or efficient yokai ability all on them. Nurikabe has the optional cheapness if you don't go full Ongabunga while Mizu has the highest damage from testing a dojo, second to Atake, and can hit multiple enemies. So those two would be my replacements if I had to choose. Certain yokai abilities have less lag to them now, so basically they don't have as long as a recovery animation, so you can spam them more often now, which is nice for cancelling certain skills like feathers. Although yokai burst counters are still faster than that, but rocket fist dudes and slimers are the ones to consider for this, however, Due to additional benefits like Rocket Fist Guy dealing some damage or key damage and Slimer dealing water or poison blight. And apart from that there's various other changes to other cores but it's a little bit too much to cover so just read the notes. They all seem kind of the same as before just a little bit better or a little bit faster. The last one I'll mention is Enki though. He's pretty cool now as you can spam it and you basically almost stay in the air for majority of the time. So pretty funny to use. Some weapon skills got buffed. True and through and triple threat are the highlights. TNT is still sucks though. Being about 30% worse than EI at full charge after the patch, Night Rain has the highest base damage, but EI gets most overall damage due to inheritables. And even if TNT gets 50% damage boost from inheritables, it's still worse than base damage Night Rain. So sad. Triple threat is now Spear's best DPS skill if it wasn't already dealing much more damage than Twisting Spear and Spearfall combined. Twisting Spear has the advantage of being charged at a distance and good for paralysis one-shot builds, but considering the charge time, Triple Threat is just faster and the changes made it better, although timing on the last hit is still a bit tight. Tonfa, Key Pulse, Flux is now much easier to perform without Demon Dance screwing you up. So very good for Tonfa users wanting to switch stances to gain Flux to bonus key. And then there's a bunch of other stuff for other skills, but it's all minor junk, so just check the description for the link. And to wrap it up, dojo enemies now scale up to your level, so they'll last longer as punching bags. Although, I still wish they added some kind of punching bag like Monster Hunter World did, that it's a stationary target, does not move, and perhaps let us change the conditions on it, like it'll take backstab damage, it'll be inflicted with poison and paralysis already, but oh well. I guess we probably will never get that unless they add it in DLC. Uh, they made some cores easier to get, like Oni B cores and such like that, so good for those searching for the Platinum. And lastly, the biggest buff from the patch was Omnio Awakening Mystic Art. It's now vastly sped up to be more in line with Ninjutsu's Enlightenment, which is a godsend for buffers like us, we can now spend less overall time buffing. It's still not instant like Neo 1, but it's good enough by far my favorite change. And yeah, I think that covers the majors. Again, patch notes in the description, 
Once the official English notes are out, I'll make an official, official, official pin comment. <laughs> but yeah, what do you guys think of the changes? Do you think Snake Mama nerf was a little bit too severe? Do you think Atake got off scot-free? And any Anenrin users, the tears, are they coming down your eyes? Let me know in the comments. I took like a week off from gaming, but I'll be back into it again, starting with a tips video. And then some more builds as we wait till May or June for the first DLC. So smash that like button, stay safe, and subscribe for more Neo 2 epicness.